So, let's start. Number 10, the exploding whale. In 1970, officials in Oregon found themselves staring down a very strange and very smelly problem. An 8-ton dead sperm whale had washed up on the beach and it was starting to rot, fast. This wasn't just a public nuisance, it was a biological time bomb made of blubber. The thing was too big to bury, too bloated to move, and too disgusting to just leave alone. Naturally, they turned to the state highway department, because who better to deal with marine biology than the folks who fix potholes? The highway department came up with a plan. Dynamite. Yep, blow it up. Use half a ton of explosives to blast the whale into itty bitty bits and let nature take care of the cleanup. The logic? The explosion would vaporize most of the carcass and the seagulls would swoop in for a nice seafood buffet with whatever remained. Except that's not what happened, at all. When the explosives were detonated, the beach did not get a gentle misting of whale particles. Instead, it got blasted with chunks of flesh the size of microwaves. Huge slabs of whale meat launched into the sky like greasy comets. One particularly unlucky chunk slammed into a car parked a quarter mile away, completely flattening it. Eyewitnesses, some of whom were reporters, described people laughing, screaming, and diving for cover. It was less nature takes its course and more apocalyptic meat storm. And the smell? Think burnt fish mixed with the scent of a tire fire, if that fire was also somehow rotting. And the worst part? The plan didn't even work. The largest, nastiest pieces of whale didn't go anywhere, they just sat there. Slightly cooked, slightly warmer, and somehow even more grotesque than before. The whole disaster was caught on film and became one of the first news bloopers to go viral, long before YouTube or TikTok. It wasn't really science. It was just a bunch of engineers trying to solve a squishy biological mess with the one thing they truly understood, explosions. And in the end, it became an unforgettable reminder that just because you can blow something up doesn't mean you should. Number nine, Thomas Migley Jr the man who accidentally ruined the world. Thomas Midsley was a chemical genius and a walking environmental disaster. First, he solved the problem of engine knocking by adding tetraethyl lead to gasoline. Great fix. Until we realized he basically poisoned the air for decades. Kids inhaled it, whole cities were exposed, IQs dropped, health crises followed. It was such a big oops. Then he tried to make refrigerators safer by inventing CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, and that worked. Until, again, scientists noticed they were eating a hole in the ozone layer. That's two planet-scale disasters from one man. <laughs> but wait, Migley's personal finale was almost poetic. Later in life, he became paralyzed from polio, so he engineered an elaborate system of pulleys and ropes to move himself in bed. One day, he got tangled in it and accidentally strangled himself. Migley wasn't evil, he was just so good at solving problems he didn't notice the flaming dumpster fire left behind each time. He's the cautionary tale for when smart people go unchecked. If there's a Mount Rushmore of accidental scientific oopsies, this guy is on it, twice. Number 8. NASA's $125 million unit mix-up. In 1999, NASA lost a Mars spacecraft, the Mars Climate Orbiter, because someone forgot to convert from Imperial units to metric. One team used Newtons, the other used Pounds Force. Nobody caught it. Nobody questioned it. The result? The spacecraft entered Mars's atmosphere at the wrong angle and disintegrated into a puff of expensive embarrassment. This was not an intern's mistake. This was a multi-team, multi-million dollar mission with years of planning. Imagine telling Congress, we lost a spaceship because someone didn't use the right ruler. NASA got roasted in headlines. The mission was supposed to provide valuable climate data and support future Mars exploration. Instead, it became a case study in why every engineering student must learn unit conversions or risk detonating millions of dollars mid-space. Afterward, NASA implemented stricter protocols for cross-checking unit systems, but the damage was done. The only thing we learned from that mission was that math really does matter, and sometimes in the most expensive way possible. Number 7. The Chernobyl Roof Robots That Melted After the 1986 Chernobyl meltdown, the reactor's roof was covered in graphite, chunks so radioactive they could kill a person in seconds. The Soviets, to their credit, decided to send robots to clean it up. Logical, right? Except they didn't 
test the robots under radiation, turns out electronics tend to melt in extreme radiation. The machines jammed, froze, smoked, or just wandered off like drunk Roombas. One robot literally walked off the roof and fell off the building. Another spun aimlessly before collapsing. Some just twitched, sparked, and died on the spot, completely useless under the intense radiation they were supposed to handle. So the plan to avoid human exposure backfired spectacularly. They had to send bio-robots, aka people, onto the roof, wearing makeshift lead suits often improvised from whatever materials were lying around. They sprinted onto the reactor, tossed debris, and jumped back in under 90 seconds. If they stayed longer, they'd die. This wasn't just poor planning. It was a failure to grasp that radiation destroys electronics. You'd think someone would have asked, hey, should we, I don't know, maybe test this first? But nope, they trusted Soviet engineering, and the humans paid the price. Number six, Project A-119, let's just nuke the moon. In the late 1950s, during peak Cold War paranoia, the US had one burning question. How can we flex so hard the Soviets just give up? The answer they came up with? Nuke the moon. This real project, called Project A-119, was a top secret plan developed by the US Air Force with input from notable scientists, including a young Carl Sagan. The goal was to detonate a nuclear warhead on the lunar surface so the explosion would be visible from Earth. Basically, a cosmic level middle finger designed to scream, look what we can do! To be clear, this wasn't for science, there was no noble lunar geology mission or thirst for knowledge, the entire point was intimidation. If the Soviets saw the US could literally blow up space, they'd think twice about messing around. But here's where science steps in, kind of heroically. When researchers ran the numbers, they realized that the explosion wouldn't even be visible from Earth without telescopes. A mushroom cloud on the moon looks less like fireworks and more like a dusty sneeze when you're hundreds of thousands of miles away. No bang, no glory. So they scrapped the plan, not because of the risk of contaminating space or violating basic decency, but because it wouldn't look cool enough. That's right. We almost nuked the moon for vibes, and the only thing that stopped it was the sheer disappointment of bad visibility. Number five, the scientist who forgot to cap the plague bottle. In 2009, yes, the 21st century, a scientist in a German lab made a mistake straight out of a medieval horror story. While handling Yersinia pestis, the bacteria responsible for the Black Death, he accidentally spilled some of it. Now, if you're like most people, your first instinct might be scream, lock the lab down, initiate containment protocols. His instinct? Wipe it up casually and forget to seal the vial it came from. Then he just left like it was no big deal. Days later, another researcher entered the same lab, unknowingly inhaled the plague bacteria, and ended up hospitalized with one of the deadliest diseases in history. She barely survived after intense treatment, and just to reiterate, this happened in 2009, the same year we were inventing Snapchat and prepping for the iPad. Humanity was launching into the digital future, while someone was almost relaunching the Middle Ages. Labs working with deadly pathogens are supposed to operate under strict biohazard protocols. This guy treated the Black Death like a coffee spill, no reports were filed, no sanitizing done, he basically just shrugged it off like, hey, it's fine. Meanwhile, the world almost had a Black Death reboot. What's terrifying is that this wasn't even some obscure back alley lab. It was a major university facility equipped and funded like a top tier research center. This whole incident proves that no matter how advanced our science gets, there's always someone who forgets the basics, like don't casually air out the bubonic plague. Number four the scientist who inhaled polonium on purpose. In the 1940s, during the Manhattan Project, Don Mastic was working with polonium, an incredibly radioactive element used in atomic bomb triggers. One day, he made the mistake of mouth pipetting a polonium solution, an old school method where you literally suck liquid into a glass tube using your mouth. And yes, people used to do that with radioactive material, different times. A tiny droplet of polonium entered his mouth, he immediately realized what had happened and did what any sensible person would do, panic. But instead of running for medical help or screaming, I just ate atomic death, he decided to turn himself into a science experiment. He spat into a beaker, breathed into a balloon, 
and collected his urine and feces to track radiation levels over time. Basically, he became a living Geiger counter. The entire ordeal was documented so thoroughly that modern radiation safety manuals still reference his experience. Miraculously, he survived. But this wasn't heroic bravery. It was wild, reckless curiosity. Mastic didn't just risk his life. He risked it methodically. He didn't freak out. He did science with the calm of a man who may or may not be glowing on the inside. Number three, the rocket that exploded because of copy paste. On June 4th, 1996, the European Space Agency launched the Ariane 5 rocket, an ambitious project carrying $370 million worth of satellites. 40 seconds after liftoff, it exploded into a spectacular fireball. The cause? A software error. But not just any software error, a copy-paste mistake from a previous rocket system. Engineers reused code from the Ariane 4, which had a different flight profile and lower acceleration. The Ariane 5 was much faster, and that old code couldn't handle the higher values. A numeric value exceeded what the system could store, triggering a crash in the guidance computer. That crash then triggered the rocket's self-destruct protocol. This wasn't a mechanical failure, nor sabotage. It was a basic programming error. Legacy code was copied over without proper testing for the new rocket. No one caught it until $370 million in years of work were obliterated in under a minute. The Ariane 5 incident has since become a textbook case in software engineering and systems testing. It's a humbling reminder, no matter how complex the machinery, one unchecked line of code can turn a rocket into a very expensive firework. Number two, the doctor who gave himself ulcers and a Nobel Prize. In the 1980s, most doctors thought ulcers were caused by stress, bad diet, or too much coffee, but Australian physician Barry Marshall had a radical theory. They were caused by bacteria, specifically Helicobacter pylori. Problem? No one believed him. The idea that bacteria could survive in the acidic hellscape of the stomach sounded absurd, so Marshall decided to go full mad scientist. He drank a glass filled with H. pylori and waited. Sure enough, he developed stomach inflammation and full-blown ulcers, then he treated himself with antibiotics and voila, cured. His DIY experiment shocked the medical world. This one-man clinical trial changed the entire field of gastroenterology. Ulcer treatments shifted from acid blockers and surgeries to simple antibiotic regimens. Years later, Marshall and his colleague Robin Warren received the Nobel Prize in Medicine. While his method was reckless, it worked. He put his gut on the line, literally, to prove his point. Sometimes science demands double-blind trials. Sometimes it demands a scientist yelling, fine, I'll drink it myself. Number one, the physicist who blew up his lab twice. Harold Urey was a genius, a Nobel Prize winning chemist, known for discovering deuterium and working on the Manhattan Project. But in terms of lab safety, let's just say his methods were explosive. In one infamous incident, he was working with hydrogen gas when a small leak led to a massive explosion, blowing out the lab windows. You'd think that would be a wake-up call, but no, Yuri doubled down. During a student demonstration, he ignited another volatile gas mixture. Boom, another explosion. His students ducked for cover while he stood there, probably thinking, hmm, interesting result. Yuri wasn't reckless because he was dumb. He knew exactly how dangerous his materials were. He just got overly confident. Like many brilliant minds, he thought he could control the chaos. Spoiler, he couldn't. His reaction after both explosions? Guess we'll need a bigger lab. <laughs> That's not damage control, that's sitcom logic. While his scientific legacy is enormous, his lab safety reputation is more kaboom centric. Thank you for watching and sticking till the end. We've got plenty more videos coming in the future. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. See you in the next one.